verification points allow us to create a, a link between the data coming through our application and also tied to our uh, baseline information. But we can also link verification points to a data pool reference. So I can actually supply variable data uh, into my particular test to allow me to accumulate and to do repetitive types of testing. So we, we talked about before the creation of a realistic data pool with live data is very important and now I can use that same information in my verification points themselves. So every time I play a script with an associated data pool now, the script is going to go in and access one of the records in the pool and then I can perform a verification test to see if it matches up with the result that I was expecting to get. So the verification point is actually going to use the data pool reference. It's not. It's actually going to use a variable to define in the data pool, not an actual value. So whereas before, normally when we run a script, what we have is hard-coded information, and we're using that hard-coded data in our comparative test for the verification point. When I'm working with data pool, it's completely different. At playback time, the test process is actually going to substitute uh, the variable in the pool for the reference and actually give me my actual result there. So for example, if I have a data pool of different kinds of orders, it has order ID, and it has uh, product ID, it has uh, product description, it has product price. What I actually see in my comparative test here is going to be the variable. And as I'm running through the test, every time the variable is encountered, it simply goes to the data pool and pulls out the associated value. And against that particular value, I'm going to perform my verification test. So I'm actually incorporating new information, new data, I'm disassociating again the physical data from the actual script so I can change my test information, I can change my test pool data to get new values as I go through the testing process. In addition to that with verification points, we're also going to get a log record. And the log record is basically going to give us a result of all the verification points that are executed and give me information about how successful those particular verification processes happen to be. So I will look in the log records to see if I have any issues, if I have any problems. So I'm going to get these test results back and we're going to see if there are any changes from the baseline results. And changes in the baseline results, if they are flagged, are going to result in some type of a defect or some type of a change in the application. Now, that might not be an actual problem. It might just be we made too much of a change to the application. We need to adjust what our baseline happens to be. For example, if on my screen I had a field called order ID and it was spelled out as order ID and I come back in the next iteration of my application, it's changed for some reason to OID. Well, maybe I'm going to get a, a, an error on the verification point because the names are too different. So I could get a, a reference out of the log file about this particular problem. So like I said, it might not always be an actual issue. It might just be some type of application change that we perform. But I can use, in conjunction with verification points, I can use my data pools and combine the two of them together.